Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter seven, verses twenty-five to thirty-one. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who, by the Lord's mercy, is trustworthy. I think that, in view of the impending crisis, it is well for you to remain as you are. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you do not sin, and if a virgin marries. She does not sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I would spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn. As though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice, as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy, as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world, as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word. Of the Lord. Are we too satisfied with the prevailing values? The content of today's reading, from one Corinthians, chapter seven, verse twenty-five to verse thirty-one, is very relevant to our context today. The situation of the early church, as revealed by Apostle Paul. Was also very similar to that of the church today. He showed concerns in both married and unmarried people in church regarding the two statuses of married and unmarried, and the respective appropriate behavior and relationships. Paul has the simple reminder: maintain the status quo and the present condition. Respect the identity given by God, and follow the holy ethical precepts. Our intimate relationships with each other is messy today. In the past, only when people's relationships were mature, becoming boyfriends and girlfriends, would they engage, and then marry and live together. But these days, these Types of relationships and evaluation are becoming unclear and confusing. It is no longer the case that only married couples can become intimate. People can now sleep together if they feel right. At the beginning of this reading, Paul talked about unmarried women, but I believe he is not just focusing on unmarried women. Unmarried men. Should also be included. Today, there are some pseudo-single people who cannot bear being single, and will engage in premarital sex. As Paul said, these people had lost their identity as a trustworthy person. This tendency to follow one's feeling has violated the teaching of holiness in the Bible. In body, identity, or in life, brothers and sisters, we are indeed living in the post-truth era. If we are honored to be parents or elders to others, we have to consider whether we are too satisfied with the status quo, and being too submissive to modern values. Perhaps we should stop saying. Children have their own way of thinking, and we should not impose our values on them.
and make excuses for our children not to follow the Bible's teaching. We may give thanks for our children every day and pray for their needs, mostly about material needs, their studies, career or future marriage. But should we not pray for our current lives and situations, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil, so that we will know only God can save us and we can only rely on God to seek the goals of life and our future marriage partners. Let us have a time of reflection. Are you praying for the life directions of your children, family members, posterity? Are you giving thanks for what you have, even if you feel life is not as good as you wish? Have you considered what you can do for the Lord with your current identity? Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks that you create men and women. Whether we are married or single, we humbly beseech to be filled with truth and harmony. Renew any corrupt relationships and amend unclean lives. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.